Welcome to Electra Online, and here we're going to take a look at another type of crystal. This time it's going to be cesium chloride. And yes, it is a simple body-centered cubic structure, and we'll get into it in just a moment. But again, we have to use our understanding of how things are packed together to try and figure out how, first of all, the structure looks like, and secondly, how to find the density of such a structure. Now, I did put down the radii of each of the two ions and the uh, atomic mass of each of the two ions so that we can uh, figure out later on what the density of that structure is. But first of all, why is it a body-centered cubic structure? Well, we do have a positive ion, cesium, and a negative ion, chlorine, chlorine and typically the, the negative ions, the anions, are larger than the cations, and it is indeed the case here as well, but there's not a lot of difference. Notice the radius, 181 picometers for chlorine and 169 picometers for the cesium ion. So since they're about the same size, we have a different kind of structure here. And the way the structure works is that if we consume that we draw a cubic structure around uh, by putting the corners at where the chlorine ions are, we have one single cesium ion in the center. Now, what is the number of cesium ions and what is the number of chlorine ions in each single structure? And I drew two structures side by side so you can see how the chlorine ions are shared by the cube on the left, the cube on the right. If I draw one on the front and, the, and right here and right here, you can see then that they're also shared by the two cubes right in front here. And if I draw another set of four underneath, you can see that each chlorine ion is actually shared by eight of those cubes so that only one eight of each chlorine ion belongs to any one of the cubes, meaning there's only one chlorine ion for this cube and only one cesium ion, so there's a one-to-one -one ratio, which is good because that's what the molecule indicates. There's one cesium and one chlorine ion in a cesium chloride molecule like that. All right, now, <clears throat> how, are they, how are they packed and how do we determine what the size of that cube is? Well, there's two ways of looking at it. For example, you can imagine that the chlorine ions are touching since the cesium ion in the center is smaller, it's perhaps possible that the chlorine ions are all touching at the corners, so we're looking at something like this. And if that's the case, the size of the cube, the side, the length of one of the sides of the cube would then be equal to two times the radius of the chlorine ion. If you then try to utilize that to find the density, you find that the density is much higher than the measured density of this compound. So that is not the way to do it. Another way to think about it is to go from front corner to back corner up here, so the bottom front to the, the rear top corner and go diagonally across the cube. And then we can imagine that the diagonal, which is the square root of three times A, A is of course the side of the cube, uh, would then be equal to two times the radius of the chlorine ion plus one time the diameter, which is twice the radius of the cesium ion. And if we find the density using this relationship between the size of the cube and the way the the ions are stacked, then we have something that is fairly close to the actual measured density. So this is the way to do it. Now the question is, why is this correct and that is not correct? Well, it turns out when you try to stick a marble, if you have four sized marbles like that, or let's say eight of them because you want four in the front, four in the back, so making a, a cube, and then you try to stuff in there another marble which is almost the same size, it will push these marbles slightly apart you'll find out then that they're not touching here, that there's actually a space in between, so that you end up with something that looks a little bit more like this. So we have the chlorine ion separated like that, and then the cesium ion looks more like this. So in that respect, you can see that they're not touching, and trying to use this as a model for the ionic structure, you will get an incorrect value. Now, since the ones on the back in the front corner and the back corner in the back will then be touching, well they're all touching this ion of course, so the best way to find the dimension is to go from the front corner here to the back corner up on top, diagonally across, and use this particular formula. So it makes sense when you think about the relative size of those ions. So let's now try to find the density of this structure, that would be the mass divided by the volume, and so the mass here, <coughs> that would be uh, one times the mass of a chlorine ion plus one times the mass of a cesium ion divided by the volume, which would be A cubed. Now, of course, we have to find out what A cubed is using our formula over there. So we know that A is equal to uh, two times the radius of the chlorine ion plus two times the radius of the cesium ion 
divided by the square root of 3. We plug in numbers. I don't have a lot of room there, but I'm going to try and make it fit. So that would be 2 times the radius of the chlorinine, which is 181 picometers, 181 picometers plus two times the rate of the cesium, cesium ion, which is 169. Now keep in mind that the radii I'm using here are not necessarily the radii for a structure like this. This is the average radii that you pull out of a book, and the way they find those numbers is to look at a various numbers of, of bonds between cesium and chlorine and other atoms, and they take an average of that ionic radius for a number of different bonds, which is not necessarily the ionic radius for a cesium chlorine structure like that. So the answer we get might be slightly different because of that, and we'll try to explain it afterwards. Anyway, we're going to divide this by, um, yeah, square root of 3. And that should give us the side, the length of the side of the single unit cube. Now we need a calculator. So we get 181 times 2 plus 169 times 2. And we divide that, that happens to be 700, divide that by the square root of 3. And that gives us 404.1 or so. Uh, 404 is close enough. So that's equal to 404 picometers for the size of that unit cell for cesium chloride. All right, now we can plug that into our density equation. So this is equal to one time the mass of the chlorine ion, which is right there. 35.45 AMUs plus the mass of a cesium ion, which is a much bigger ion, 132.9 AMUs. Divide all that by the size, which is a 404 uh, times 10 to the minus 12 meters, because a picometer is 10 to the minus 12 meters. We have to, of course, cube that. And then we have to multiply that times the conversion factor, 1 AMU is equal to 6.02 times, oh, not 1 AMU, that's 1 gram, I'm trying to convert to grams. So 1 gram is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the, times 10 to the 23 uh, AMUs. And then we have to multiply it times 1,000 grams per kilogram. And again, I'm putting my units in the wrong place, so one kilogram goes on top because that's what I'm trying to get, and 1,000 grams on the bottom. There we go. So this will convert AMUs to grams and then converts grams to kilograms. So now we're ready to grab a calculator and figure out the density of cesium chloride. So let's see here. We have a 35.45 plus 132.9. We add that together, now we have to convert that, so divide by 6.02 e to the 23rd, Divide by 1,000. Okay, now we divide that by 404 e to the 12 minus, and we have to cube that. Equals, and we get 4,241. So this is equal to 4,241 kilograms per cubic meter, which means it's 4.24 grams per cubic centimeter. Now, how does that compare to the actual value? So, well, since I don't have the actual value memorized, and if I find my glasses, I'm even in better shape. Uh, there we go. Actual value, 3,990, or 3.99. So the actual value is density equals 3.99 grams per cubic centimeter, which is a smaller density than the density we actually calculated. So why is that? Well, it turns out we assumed, when we looked at this crystal structure, that the radius could be determined by assuming that the, that the uh, chlorine ion is touching, the cesium ion is touching the chlorine ion there, which is probably true So because they're obsolete charged, right? The cesium ion is positively charged, this is negative charge, negative, so they would be attracting each other. But what we still have is we still have the repulsive forces of these chlorine ions uh, on the corners of that cube. And so we would expect that there's going to be a repulsive force this direction, this direction, this direction, and this direction. So even though the chlorine ions are being attracted by the positive sodium ion, which is uh, cesium ion, which is in the center, we expect a repulsive force between the chlorines. And so they resettle in such a way that the actual radii in this particular structure is probably slightly larger because the repulsive forces 
than the radius that we find in an average kind of bond. And so therefore, the actual value for the structure is probably a little bit more than 404 picometers. If it's a little bit more, that means we're defined by a bigger number. We should then end up with a, very, with a smaller number. So we're off by about 5%. But that's probably due to the additional forces that we did not account for in this particular case. Anyway, we can see that the result we got is pretty close to the actual measured answer by making these basic assumptions about the crystalline structure. And it's actually pretty fun when you start doing this and start getting the hang of it.